Good morning. Denise Dryden here. I'm out in Whitefish. You got a barking dog across the street. All the Halloween stuff is out. It's fall. And I wanted to talk today about some of the big changes that we're feeling between us and other people. Like between people we love, people we've known forever, people we work with, people we marry, people we raise, right? So whether it's a partner, it's a child, it's a friend, it's a family member, it's a colleague, you know, what we've noticed is that in 2021, we spent a lot of time away from some of these old systems and we started changing the way we do things, whether it's how we commuted to work, whether it's, you know, the fact that we went out to eat so many times a week. I, this dog is driving me crazy. <laughs> whether we go to the movies, whether we go to bars, whether we um, go to malls, whether we go to sports events, you know, the, the idea of going to school. Now, for a lot of us, that's in the past, right? However, maybe it isn't. Because what we noticed is that these were all those conditioned states of being that we're still sort of finding our way through. So whether it's over or we're in partial, you know, there's mass mandates, there's, you know, limited hours at work, you know, it doesn't really matter what this last year and a half, almost, well, about a year and a half, um, has been like. The idea is that we have changed, right? So what I want to talk about today is incoherence showing up in our relationships, right? Because when things change, they change in so many different ways. So I guess the first question I would ask you is what do you feel has changed the most? You know, really take a second and go inside and go, wow, what has changed the most? Was it leaving work? Was it being able to figure out how to work from home and self-manage, you know, self-pace? Whether it was alone time, like I live by myself, however, my work and my social, you know, outlets are what keep me going, right? Or did it get really intense because you and your, your loved ones were all locked in this house and you had to get to know each other on a different level? So, you know, what was it that changed? Because my guess is that things changed for a lot of different reasons, right? So it makes sense that when we step away from some of the systems, the ways, the schedules, the routines, we change the way we feel, right? Oh man, I actually like commuting, or not commuting, I actually like working from my desk. I actually like um, doing my studies at my desk at my own pace without all of the bells ringing and in and out of classrooms. You know, what we want to do is we want to find out, well, what did, what did it feel like, right? What resonated with me in this redefinition as I've been establishing new systems for myself? Make sense? Yeah. So what happens is within our close relationships, we experience the same things, especially, you know, when we've built something up over 5, 10, 15 years, we have this routine, right? We take on these changes and all of a sudden each person is doing these changes in a different way, whether it's how they're at home, whether it's um, how what, what they decide to specialize in, like all of a sudden I like to read books or I like to listen to podcasts with my earphones on, which means I'm not in sort of cooking around the kitchen you know, talking all the time. So what is it that changed the way that you do living? Okay, so I wanna talk about this concept of coherent. What does it mean to be coherent? When we have coherent thoughts, they stick together. They're organized, they're sequential, they make sense to us, right? So it means that they cohere together, that they integrate, that they're orderly, um, that they're logical, that they're consistent, right? And that when that things are going together really well. So anytime we spend time in a system doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? It becomes coherent. It makes sense to us mentally. We, it's logical. We understand it. We know what to expect. When things are incoherent, right? Something's off. We're out of connection. It's loose. It's running around. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's disconnected, right? There's a lack of harmony. Our thoughts are jumbled. We can't see the logical sequence of what's going on. So when we are incoherent, here in our mind has to wrap itself around what we're seeing and we're experiencing 
and then has to depend on, oh man, is this gonna happen or is this not gonna happen? This is really different, how do I deal with that? And so what happens is our anxiety goes up, our agitation goes up, especially within, and then it shows up in agitation to the other person, right? You know, like if you say that one more time. <laughs> so people, places, and things are gonna increase that incoherence, which means that it's not the same. It's really, it's just not the same. Incoherent means I'm not logically following it. So when our known, dependable, logical, conditioned states change, it creates incoherence. It also, which is mental, mental um, sequencing, right? It also uh, creates dissonance, which is our body is picking up on waves of something that's really different and we don't know what that is. So incoherence is the mental sequencing. Dissonance is how we feel when those, those sine waves come at us, right? And the, those energetic waves. So we don't really have the words or the ways to talk about this because it's energetic or it's systematic and we're not in a place where we have done this and talked about this for very long. So these are all new tools. So we have to learn how to talk about this. We have to learn how to address it, which is something's going on here and it's really causing me some anxiety. It is incoherent with what I know my life to be. So then you, you know, it's like you and, whether it's your child, whether it's your, your partner, whether it is your best friend, you know, you and this person are experiencing a disconnected, out of harmony agitation around each other. And it can go into, man, if, and you know, I like that, if then, right? If you would just, then I would. <laughs> and we get into the, 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 the pointing the finger on the outside where there's judgment, there's control, there's harshness, like you are making my head hurt. You are bugging the crap out of me, right? Which, by the way, is not different than the adolescent going through individuation between 14 and 18. It's almost like the, when the kid has to step away from some of the systems the family has created, there's this, this rock. And then everything that the parent says, everything that the parent does bugs them and vice versa. Everything that the kid does bugs them. So I have some tips. I have five tips for you today, okay? Um, and I need a tissue, so hold on just a minute. Ah, lots of traffic, lots of dogs, lots of activity. Ah. Okay, so tip number one, pull it up within yourself, right? Face it, ah, what is it that I'm experiencing, noticing, feeling? What is this? And you kind of bring it up and you hold it like, oh, this is what I've been feeling. And so what we notice is that that self-knowledge is like, I'm feeling agitated, I'm feeling this, I'm experiencing some swirling, I'm experiencing some disconnection. So we pull it up within ourselves first, right? That's number one. Number two, locate the source, which is identify that it's people or places or things. And what does it bring up in the mental, the th thought process, your mental, your emotional, your physical reactions? What is going on when you're doing that, right? So you. You, you identify the source and it's like, it's always at the grocery store with these people. It's at work now when I have to commute in. It's with my kid when we're talking about school. Whatever it is, identify the source, locate it. Number three, look at what has changed, shifted, or grown. You, them, that, 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 that schedule, that, that it, you know, that thing. Where is it incoherent? Where is it out of connection? Where is it out of harmony? Where is it out of resonance with your body? Really get an idea of, oh yeah, it's work now. I don't think I can do the same kind of work. Even though I've been doing it remote, it, I need to do something different, right? So number four is to seek connection points. If you wanna keep it going, you want to you want to you want to seek a connection point. So maybe there's something that you used to do together. Like I'm going to use the example with your team. Maybe you know, like um, for me, I used to put some music on and get the chopping boards out, put two or three out with some knives, and I would start to cook dinner. And I, and and I'd like make sure the fireplace was going in the winter, that it was kind of in this zone, and I would make dinner. And my kids would kind of like. Mom's at it, I can hear the music, I wanna go down there. And sometimes they would just sit with me at the counter, sometimes they would help cook and chop and, and play. But what is it that we used to do together? 
And so now you do that, right? So, you know, you continue to keep those pieces going. You focus on what works for you and what you want to do for yourself. You do the things that make you happy and you let them come find you. If you go out there, you know, sort of, um, well, it, it, uh, uh, that's number five. I, I'm not, I jumped ahead. So what you do is you resound, you, you put out an energetic connection. It's invisible and you do it without expectations. You, and I use the term all the time in my coaching, be the honey, be the warm thing that they know and have them come back. So whether it's a partner who's been drifting and you guys just don't connect anymore, find that thing that you do really well and keep doing it and watch what they do. You have to be happy. You have to, to resound. You have to provide all of that, right, for you. It's so hard because we're so used to dealing with somebody on the outside. And number five, it will either align into a new form or it won't. We can't force it. We can't control this. We can't, you know, make it happen. If something is dissonant, if something is incon in incoherent, right, it doesn't work. You can't force it. You can't make that person control. You can't control what they're going to do. Does it make sense? So you accept this and you come to peace with it and you be honest with yourself about this. So you collaborate with it, which is, you know what? I am watching my family system change. Each person has found their own way of dealing with these stressors. This is how I deal with mine. This is how I know how to connect. I'm gonna trust that that will happen when things calm down. And you can also let it go. You can let it go and expand into the things that are coherent, that the things that do resonate with you because there's going to be differences. And so what's happening right now is that we're naturally starting to to sort of separate into the energetic signatures, into the energetic loves and likes and dislikes that we that we follow. And it's happening at a rapid pace. So anticipate that we are going to see incoherence in our relationships. If this is something that you want some support with, um, that's what I do. I'm working on how do we integrate the changes? How do we integrate what works and what doesn't work? You can find me on Denise Dryden. Um, dot com. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. You can find all those sources and find ways to get a hold of me. You can direct message me. You could drop me an email, whatever works for you. You have a lovely October. Um, it's Sunday the 17th. Tomorrow Jupiter goes um, direct, which means that boom, big th things are going to get big and expand really fast. So just be with. Have fun. See you next week. Bye-bye.